hello guys welcome to another installment of my tutorials today i'm going to show you how we could create a pipe text effect a very very sweet and simple effect right you use corel draw to do that we're going to be doing a combination of things we're going to be using the blend tool and using the line drawing tools to achieve this right so the reason for that is we need to blend two shapes together and then create a path for those shapes to travel across to form the message we are trying to uh, we are trying to push right so in this case the first thing we're going to do is to create a text well you obviously would have created a document and uh, for me i named my pipe text effect so select your text tool and just click here and type peace these days uh, these days you know peace war these things they just resonate with me so we type peace and then we change this um the reason why we change this i'll explain i'm going to use a font called bento the reason why I'm using this font, this script font piece, is because uh, most of the words are connected and we need something like this. Now, for the, for the fact that we're trying to create a path, it's going to be easier if most of the words are connected. And so this will do it for us. Or we'll see as we create anyways. So let's start. So select, uh, for me, I'm going to use a beast spline, so which is like one of the best line drawing tools we have. We draw curves and lines. So select the B spline and then come over here and try to link all the text together. Now for me, I'm going to start with the P. So I'm going to click down here and then go up and go around. Okay, go do backspace if you make a mistake. Just go up like so. If you make mistakes, you could always correct that. You don't have to be very hard on yourself. Just keep going. And here I'm going to go around the E like this. stop here because i can't twist this around the a so for the a i'm going to do it separately so i'm going to start from here and go around like so and go up here and turn it around and come down and for the c i'm going to just go towards the end and try not to make it as wide as the e right so i just go around it and link it to the e which will have a wider you know there are there are terms for these things right for this um for the bodies of these characters what i can't call recall them right now and then once you're done at the end you press enter and at this point i think we don't need this um text we created anymore so we can select the text and move it away or delete it but i'll just need to move it so i can just compare now the first things i want to do is do some editing i want to make the p wider here, right around here, a bit round, and the E, I want to bring it out from here like so, now these are just my edits, I'm trying to fine tune this thing and make it really really make sense, and this, I'm going to extend it, and then the A, I'm going to have this one extending inside, like that, and there, yeah, this place too, and the C and the E and I think this looks cool. What is E too? Um, let's see if we can just you know have it like so. Just make it a bit extended so it just has a bit of you know finesse at the end and uh, the edge here the base here just you know so this is piece and you can see from our own def uh, from our own creation that the piece is made up of two um two path right so so now we can delete this so the next thing we want to do is interesting part right i think i need to work on this a bit yeah um here here make it come out a bit so now the interesting part is to draw our shape so for here i'm going to draw a circle hold control to make sure it's you know perfect and then for this circle i'll press g and then i'll go to my interactive field so under the fountain field i'm going to give it a fountain field so i'm going to use a light and dark shade of red a normal and dark shade of red and i'll explain the reason why i'm using a dark shade and a normal shade combined is so it's going to have a bit of shadow you know so when you're creating your when it's traveling along this path when we are trying to make it travel along this path we are going to see the uh the areas where they cross into each other 
if you don't give it a gradient like this it's going to just blend seamlessly so you cannot really tell where things are crossing over each other so that's why we need the gradient so we make a duplicate of this and then we extend to this side and also i want to have a situation where the beginning of the path is going to be smaller and then as it progresses as a shape it's going to get bigger till it gets to the end so for that i'm going to extend this one make it a bit bigger so hold shift and just extend from the edges and then i'm going to join them or i'm going to use my blend tool and drag from here to here so it blends everything together but you can see it's not very very smooth so to make it smooth we'll fire it up to like 999 which is like the maximum and with this we have our blend now the next thing we want to do is we want to tell how many divisions we have here is going to determine the number of um, um, the number of sh duplicates we are going to make with this blend. So we could blend this this we could have this blend uh, fitted to this path. We have it fitted to this path, and then we could have we need another one to fit to this path. So we need two of these. So do a, a duplicate of it and keep this one. Then go to your blend tool, obviously you still at the blend tool, and under your properties bar, go to path properties and select new path. Then for the new path you want to put it in, select the shape you created, you see it just fit, fit it in immediately. But it's not going to be very perfect because it, has not, it doesn't fit the whole path. So you need to go to your properties bar still, and under the more blend options, you select blend along full path, and then it extends all the way. And now you can notice how this area looks thinner and this area looks bigger, right? So it spreads progressively. Now for this other shape, I am going to remove clear the blend and then take this to the other side. You can hold shift or control to do that. It doesn't really matter whether it's straight or bent. So we want to make this a continuation and um, in order to make it a continuation, I feel like this thing needs one more curve here, not here, on this line. So kind of like bend it out yeah so here we need a continuation and the continuation we need is supposed to be as big as this and um the edge is supposed to be bigger so let's delete this one and then select this and make a duplicate of it it's not so necessary what i'm trying to do is actually just to extend it because i'm trying to achieve an effect but you could do the basic and you'll be all right all right so but just follow what i'm trying to do so we select this again and we blend, we drag into this one and we go back and do 999, press enter and then we go here and say new path and we select this and we go to path, um, more blend options and we say blend along full path so you have this. So you can see how it goes from thin to fat from here to here all the way. And then one thing uh, I'd like to say is, your, since you've turned your path, since you've turned the path into a blend, you can always adjust it. Take for example this part, if you feel that, if you feel the need to increase this, this path, you feel the need to increase this path, you can always select it and uh, bump it up to shapes. You can select the circle here and you can just increase it a bit and it affects the rest of the lines, right? You can do that to the ending or the beginning because that is where the two circles are now connected they just simply traveled along this path to achieve this shape right and there's something i did not explain that i'd like to explain here just to make it clearer for us i am going to have to duplicate this so i'll do a control d and bring this down now for the shape you created when you're creating a blend there is always a shape in the front and a shape behind when you create two objects in Corel Draw, one is always in front of the other one, right? If we give these two objects colors, we realize that there is the red one is in front of the green, right? So that's what I'm trying to say. So when you blend both of them, for example, let's do that here. Let's remove the outlines just quickly and blend them together. You notice that the red looks like on top. If you move the red, you see it's always on top. When you select the shape, when if you make a mistake when you're editing probably because you the error was due to you creating two objects and then you blended from the one here to this and so you ended up having this shape here you ended up having this one here behind when the reverse is supposed to be the case and all you can always do is you could always clear your blend and send it to the front or you could always select this one Let's do our shape tool. You can always select. Let's do our pick tool. You can always select this, or select the last shape there and sh send it to the front. Do shift page up. 
right so now it comes to the front and stays but you have to use your pick tool to select it so if you make that mistake in your design and you're seeing something funny take for example let's say this one is behind you shift page down right and then um, the one here is in front shift page up probably this is how you did it so you notice that your your a is kind of like popping out from the front and so are the other shapes and it's not making much sense all you can do is use your pick tool then select this one and do shift page down and send it to the bottom so it stays behind and then come here and send this one shift page up to the front and also it will hide the lines inside and you can also remove the lines inside even if you don't want to hide it by selecting it and right clicking on your no color and it will take it off but an easier way to do it would be to select your last your but your last blend and send it to the front right now to round up what we've done we could delete this and um, back to the original one there's one last thing we could do we could always um use these options here clockwise blend and anti-clockwise blend counterclockwise blend rather to work on the colors and give it some pop right so you can see this looks really really cool right you can use the clockwise blend you can use the counterclockwise um, blend and you can give them this amazing tone of color now you could just group it and you know center it press p add the box you know make it grayish or black yeah. and this is basically what you can arrive at right for your final you can leave it as red the original color you have the gradient or you could just twist it with these colors to give it a, bit, a little bit of um finesse right so if you enjoyed this video make sure to like and um, drop a comment and you could always request for something you want me to do for you um a tutorial you could always drop that in the comment and if i read that and it's something i can do then i'll attempt it but until then